Mr. Saeed is holder of a PhD in economics from Cambridge University. Over to you, sir. Ji, thank you very much. Um, um, the title of the book is, if uh, I I've, uh, am not overstating it, is uh, not only relevant, pertinent, but uh, um, Mr. Shabbar Zaidi can, uh, if he advertises it well, and all of us do, um, could be a bestseller because this is the most uh, hotly um, referred to issue uh, about Pakistan uh, in the rest of the world and in the minds of a number of Pakistanis. Now, I want to um, first say, uh, read out a little bit about who Mr. Shabbar Zaidi is because that is very important to understand uh, where this book is coming from. Um, Mr. Shabbar Zaidi was born in Karachi. He is a graduate with distinction from the Haley College of Commerce, Lahore, University of Punjab and a chartered accountant by profession. A partner since 1995 in A.F. Ferguson and uh, Company which is a leading chartered accountants firm in Pakistan and is a century old firm all over the world. He has been the president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan and South Asia Federation of, uh, of Accountants. He has been a member of the Developing Nations Committee of International Federation of Accountants, uh, a trustee of SIUT, uh, Board of Governors of Liaquat National Hospital and Board of Director Karachi Education uh, Initiative and sponsor of the Karachi School of Business and Law. And he was recently the caretaker, m Minister of Finance of the Sindh government. Now he writes a book, uh, an accomplished chartered accountant writes a book which is titled Pakistan is not a failed state. And in the beginning of the book, the question that I asked myself that uh, why has Mr. Shabbar Zaidi, whom I have known for many years, He's written a book on, the, uh, on whether Pakistan is a failed state or not. Um, and then I open the book and he says, I've written it for my grandchildren who are not yet born. So um, <laughs> let's start from there. Why did you write and what about your unborn grandchildren that you're writing for? Because uh, I believe that uh, <coughs> there are many, my children, my daughter is living abroad, my children, my son is living in England. Maybe some of our gen future generation may not live in this country. A part of us are not living in this country. So they, the people who are not living in this country and the people who are not yet born, when they will see this phase of Pakistan, they will say that Pakistan has not given us anything, which is not a fact. Pakistan has given us everything. So, <laughs> so when in 2000 Today is 2014, when in 2025, 2030, 2050, my grandchildren will sit down and in somewhere, maybe in New York, in Toronto, maybe in Lahore, wherever they are, they may feel that Pakistan uh, was in trouble and it's a difficult state to live with, but they should realize that this is not <coughs> a failed state. It was, as I said in my book, it was ne no neither a failed idea when you make this Pakistan, nor it is today it is a failed position, nor it is going to be a failed state because, and I explain, explain next question, that this is a successful, I would say, society and, uh, and a country and uh, we, there are people who, have, who, have, who are not hopeful about this country, but if we go deep down in the uh, analysis of the economic and historical perspective of this country, then you feel this was, this is, this was, as I reiterate, Pakistan, as I said in my book, it was not a failed idea. And I have written in my book on every night when I sit down with my mother on the dining table. She was nine years old, I have written in my book. She was nine years old when Pakistan was made. And when I was not <laughs> convinced that Pakistan should have been made or not made, and she would always say, Tumhe samay nahi aari, ye idea theek tha. And you know, she has seen the, the, the both sides. I have, I have seen the one side. And I refer to my grand, grandfather, my nana in Lahore. She was, she was politically affiliated and, and she always used to say, you don't understand Jinnah 
You have not seen Jinnah Saab. So what I have said, that my generations, unfortunately I have seen that the historians and the, actually the economic historians have not portrayed the logic of economics of the Muslims of India for the creation of Pakistan to the younger generation. So I want to explain to my generation who have not yet come that this was an economical, politico-economic action of that society. That's why I say, that's why I have written this book. Okay. I'll play a bit of a devil's advocate now, Shabbar Sam. Um, I think you've done a, a, a good job in the book. Of, uh, the book itself is about uh, the economic uh, existence of Pakistan and the economic uh, sort of coherence of, uh, of Pakistan. Um, and that it, there, is, there are uh, traces that I see in it, uh, it's in, a, in, in some ways carries on from Etazaz Essen's book, uh, yes. The Indus Saga, where he talked about the, the coherence of the Indus Valley civilization. My, uh, the, the devil advocate part I want to play is that there is too much emphasis. First of all, there is, um, the, the book is in a binary and that is uh, Muslims and Hindus. Um, but Abul Kalam Azad had made this point that, uh, that once you um, start talking in terms of identities, then you open a, a different Pandora's box. And Azad himself said that, uh, that human beings are not only carry multiple identities. They are Hindu and Muslim, but they are also man and woman. They are rich and poor. They are Sindhi and Punjabi. They speak one language or the other. Um, so in that sense, uh, is, is there too much emphasis on the economic coherence and not on identity? That's a, exactly. And you read a very right question. The, uh, my book is, very <coughs> frankly, I believed on a united subcontinent. I believed. And I use the word believed in a past tense <coughs> that there, this, this subcontinent should have been one country. I never mentally accepted in the beginning that this country should have been partitioned. But after reading the history deep down, including the book by Raj Mohan Gandhi, he was, he was, yesterday I was talking to him, uh, it was an economic need of the majority provinces of India. I am saying majority provinces, majority Muslim provinces to have a separate political entity. I am from a place which never became Pakistan. My grandfather, my father came from a place. We came from Agra. We never, we never became part of Pakistan. So we, Pakistan is the, is the economic salvation of I have used in my word. For the remainder, I use the word remainder, that there the remainder was the Muslims economic society had a problem and the remainder were two provinces in the, in, in the northeast and the northwest. These were the Muslim majority provinces and I wanted, I wanted that Hindus should have lived here. Unfortunate, unfortunate incident which took place and I have put, put, put blame on Lord Cyril Radcliffe, I have used the word, one sentence, I, I, I will use one sentence which Patrick uh, has used, Patrick Lawrence has used in his books, that Lord Cyril Radcliffe was a barrister and he had a brief. He came with an objective of creating the, the problems. So what I'm saying, Jinnah Saab and the partition of Pakistan never wanted the kind of thing we ended up, but the idea was correct. The division of Bengal and division of Punjab and this, this, this bloody migration is, is, is not, was not in the mind of Mr. Muhammad Ali Jinnah. So what I'm saying, the objective was, of this country was to have a separate political dominance for the areas where the Muslims were in majority, which were Bengal and which were uh, Northwest. And I have said in my book that Abul Kalam Azad was wrong when he said this country will, will, has failed in 71. Because if the idea of two-nation theory would have been wrong, then Bangladesh would have been part of East India. If the Bangladesh is not part of India, it means there were two nations. If the Bangladesh would have been part of India, there are two nations. But Bangladesh is not a part of India. So when we say the Nazariya, Pakistan, the Qatar, Kutubia, <coughs> this is a wrong statement. If the history has proved 
that some part of idea may be disturbing, but the idea of two Muslim identities were correct because Bangladesh became Bangladesh. But it is still a Muslim state in Northwest India. This is Pakistan. I can name it New Pakistan. I can I can name it anything else. <coughs> but, but so no, what 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 are you, what are you name to call it? It is a Muslim country. The question is is a Muslim country. The question is if if the idea was wrong, why why in since 1947 there has never been any movement for unity of India. The people who were opposing the partition of India never promoted promotion, unity of India. Never. They blame us that we partitioned. But the people on the other side, the Nehru and Gandhi, they never said, now we should reunite. In Bangladesh, they should, they should have done it. This idea was wrong. Let us reunite. Let us, let us undo the border at Jasur and let us Calcutta and Dhaka be one country. Why they have not said this thing? Why they have not said this thing? Leave aside us. We are wrong people. We are bad people. But why they have not united against Bangladesh and, 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 and the Gaul? Because the identities and reasons, culture which I have explained, I may be wrong, but there is a reason for it. What I am trying to explain, that the, the partition of India on the basis of Muslim majority provinces <coughs> was a reasonable, I, have, I, am, I am an accountant, I have tried from economics and accountant point of view, it was a right idea. So it was not a wrong idea. And it survived. Even after 71, it survived in the form of Pakistan and Bangladesh. Um, one other very interesting um, it's element that one finds uh, going through your book is that in the book, uh, uh, Ms. Shabbar Saab has uh, uh, given, has, has commented on the economic uh, performance of different regimes in Pakistan and the reason I said in the beginning that that we, uh, given his background is very important, that for a chartered accountant and for a person from the corporate sector, uh, he has the softest corner for the 1971-77 uh, Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto regime. And he thinks that that was in the right direction and an opportunity lost. Uh, yes, did I, I still find, I find it uh, interesting that Mr. Zaidi is saying it. Can you elaborate? You know, uh, the, I think the, the only objective of my book, the first part, history, I am not the authority in history, but I, want, I am very convinced on the second part, where I have divided my Pakistan economic history into seven parts. First, pre Ayub Khan, Ayub Khan, Zulfagali Bhutto, Ziaulak, uh, uh, <coughs> then political regime for 10 years, then Musharraf, and then Zadari. These are seven phases. And I would like all of you to read those phases, not any of you, but I have just listed down the economic policies of all these seven phases. This is the main, this is, this is, this is the book all about. That we people, in, in very simple words, don't know what has actually happened in Pakistan economic history. We have views, we have political ideas, we have observations. But very few people have the facts listed down in an, in a log, in an order in 20, 30 pages. Coming back to your question, if you look at from 47 to 2013 and 14 and now even, even after 14, whatever we say, whatever we say, the prescriptions are coming from Washington. Whether we accept or we don't accept. I am, I am the, being the person who have been brought in, the, bringing back those, those prescriptions from Washington, but they were all brought in from Washington. The only time where we had a chance, I am say chance, or opportunity, which, where we could have our own economic nationalism, because the, the people of Pakistan has given a mandate <coughs> to a political party, which was, Bhutto Sahib was from, a, from southern Pakistan, the Punjab, big, biggest province of the country, had given a mandate to a middle class. To a middle class, not tainted by any ideology, coming from West, to have a change. To have a change. But he didn't, that, but that is why I, I, I call that chapter as wasted opportunity. I am not saying he has done anything, I am not, not favouring him. But it was an opportunity for the nation has given him a chance. Because 
uh, and why I'm saying what what chance was given to him? The Punjab had a biggest landlord and and the land holding in the country, and all the MNAs, MPs of Punjab, by Bhutto Sahab, were middle class landlords, middle class farmers. Not seventy. I'm talking seventy, not seventy seven. He could have done land reform. He could have done land reform. Sindh was different. Punjab was different. The MNAs from Punjab, Bhutto Sahab, MNAs from Punjab were from different different people. He had a, even the landlords were not with him. The people were with him. He could have done land reform because nobody talked seriously about land reform and nobody had a people mandate to do land reform. Bhutto Sahab had a had a people mandate to land had a land reform. He didn't do it. The second thing he couldn't do it was the nationalisation was a wrong thing. Was a wrong thing. I totally disagree with nationalisation. But the problem is, nationalisation was brought in by a concept which was laid down by not by Bhutto, but Dr. Mabulak. He talked about the 22nd families. He talked about the many things, the Bais Khandan and everything, and the and the concentration of wealth which was going on at that time. Uh, we may disagree. We may disagree. Agree on that. But the people at, at Pakistan, the class differences were increasing. He had a he had a chance. He had a chance to correct it. What I'm saying, what I'm trying to explain, from 47 to 50, 70, and from from 79 to 80, do we have any time when we are talking on land reform, when we are talking about the distribution distribution issue of this country, do we have we are, are talking about the real spending on health and education? These are the issues which are never taken up by the people of this country. At that time, the, there was a chance. There was a chance, and they were missed out. That is why I am saying that Ayub Khan's regime was had done some good work, but the way should have been taken taken away, uh, taken towards a betterment of the people. That was not there, and my logic <coughs> is very different. My logic is very different. The the Western trade policies, the Western trade policies never like. Our areas to be economically independent. This is a very deep down WTO regime issue, which we should. I have said in my book, we should try to understand what Deng Xiaoping of China has been consistently saying. We should study. We should write another book on Pakistan and the real effect of WTO. I have I have written a book, a chapter on this book about the negative effect of the Chinese trade we are having in this country. so what i'm saying our basic problem is that we say the americans and the and the western have dominated us culturally no they have dominated us and i when say when i say us it means whole india the 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 trade deficit of the whole subcontinent is still today is more than 100 billion rupees 100 billion rupees we are in trade deficit and i don't see anything to come that that this trade deficit of 100 will come back to zero or near to zero so what i am trying to say yes. that we have become poor and and we have to come back to acha ji um, uh, actually uh, this is before uh, we open up um, uh, uh, an interesting uh, title that he has now uh, the, that uh, shabbar sahab has explained that it's washington which uh, in the in this book he says that has dominated policy he says that the ziaul haq regime was washington via jadda uh, so i suppose when he writes uh, the uh, a postscript on what is happening now it's going to be uh, jadda washington jadda north waziristan um, <laughs> wherever <laughs> um, we have time i think for two to three questions please sir sir azhar sir i agree with you that pakistan is not a free <coughs> state yet uh but i would like to know whether you recognize the existential threats to the country and my personal reading is that it's the system that has failed and that system needs to be reformed if we are to save the state because we are going it appears into a free fall and if we do not change the system 
as an old political worker, I will not fool myself or try and fool anyone over here that all is well. We are in very choppy waters. And what do you think should be the reform program bring about the change in the system so that we can save the country. You have spoken May about, you you have spoken about land reform. May I ask you about three things? 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 May I ask you about three फॉर्चुनेटली इसमें कभी इन तीन सिस्टम में करेक्शन नहीं की हमारी सारी सिस्टम करेक्शन हमेशा रही है पॉलिटिकल करेक्शन की मैं सिर्फ आपको वाई आई एम सेइंग वी शुड गेट आउट ऑफ दिस माइंड सेट फ्रॉम वाशिंगटन इज दैट वाशिंगटन इज सेइंग दैट द गवर्नमेंट शुड बी स्मॉलर आई से गवर्नमेंट शुड बी लार्जर गवर्नमेंट शुड बी नो सर प्लीज लेट बी कम्प्लीट गवर्नमेंट शुड बी स्मॉलर इन बिजनेसिस Government should be smaller in re in regulation, but government should be larger in in health, larger in education, larger in security, and lar larger in infrastructure. In our country, government is smaller in the places where it should be it should be uh, uh, larger, and it is smaller where it should be larger. So this is the problem. Okay, now uh, two more qu questions. Uh, yeah, and please uh, try and be as brief as you can and as pointed as Hello. you can. You just said that uh, the West is not interested in letting us develop. Why is that? It's quite simple. Okay, now, uh, 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 the lady right behind him. I'm sorry, a uh, uh, guest from India. Yeah. As a Bengali from India, I was very interested in what you said about the Bengal partition. But there was a serious <coughs> move to have something independent called United Bengal. And there was a movement with some local Congress leaders, Subhash Chandra Bose's elder brother, Sarath Bose, and the great peasant leader. He wrote it. He wrote the whole story. Yeah, but you didn't mention it. He wrote the whole story. We got startled by the Delhi Congress. You know, I have written a book. I will give you a question first. Behind him. Sir Adam Ji Daud was in Pakistan. He was in Calcutta. And he said in 47, 47, Liaquat Ali Khan came to him and said that we are convinced that it will be United Bengal. So what happened? I, I am going to say, please think and read about Lord Cyril, Cat, Cyril Cat Radcliffe. <coughs> I, I am for United Bengal. That's, United Bengal is the right idea. Do it. <laughs> Sir, the question is very simple. Since I am an accountant, I am an accountant. The question is why somebody should lose his economic benefit. I have written in this, I read this book, there is a passage between Churchill, between Churchill and Roosevelt. There is a passage between Churchill and Roosevelt that what are your trade policies in, in, in India? He said, we are very clear. We will do what is in our interest. What is in our interest? There is a passage in this book between Churchill and Roosevelt. And what Churchill said, we will not let Indians have their independent trade policies. What I am trying to say, 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 agreed on a technical agreement with IMF. Read that agreement is exactly what I am in 2014. Ji. Kapar, congratulations. Thank you. He's a dear friend, but I... I'm going to dissent with you. <laughs> I'll be very open about it because I, I, I have great respect my, for you. you my, think you should write Pakistan, not a failed state, an accountant's perspective. <laughs> because the case and argument in this book only substantiate establishment assertions, legitimizes the misdeeds and machinations over the last 60 years. So it comes up collective responsibility. It will endear the case and the argument of the establishment more than anything else. That's fine. No, I have, uh, let me explain to you. The question is, I, I think that the right, right, the right uh, name should be Pakistan, not a federal state, an accountant's view. I agree with this. Mm -hmm. But what I am saying, what I am saying is not a federal state. Let me explain why I am saying it's a federal state. And I, I discussed with As, uh, Asad also. There are two problems in a state. 
वन आर स्ट्रक्चरल प्रॉब्लम अदर आर प्रोसेस प्रॉब्लम आई वर डिस्कसिंग ये स्टडी विद वन ऑफ द डिस्ट्रिक्स ऑफ कराची ग्रीस द ग्रीस कंट्री विच इज यूडान इट इज इट हैज गॉट स्ट्रक्चरल प्रॉब्लम इवन इफ दे ट्राई देयर बेस्ट इट विल बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर देम टू कम आउट ऑफ दैट द कंट्री हैज गॉन इन टू एक्नॉमिक स्ट्रक्चरल प्रॉब्लम पाकिस्तान एक्नॉमिक स्ट्रक्चरल प्रॉब्लम आर नॉट देयर द ओनली प्रॉब्लम इज दैट आवर प्रोसेस हैव बीन डिजाइंड डिजाइंड आई एम सेंग डिजाइन टू फेवर द ट्रेड रिलेशंस एंड एक्यूमुलेशन ऑफ वेल्थ आउटसाइड पाकिस्तान एंड आई आइडेंटिफाइड सम ऑफ देम हेयर इज नॉट अ कम्प्लीट इट इज नॉट अ कम्प्लीट बुक ऑन द सब्जेक्ट वट आई एम जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू हाईलाइट दैट परसेप्शन अबाउट द पाकिस्तान फेल्यूअर आर बेस्ड ऑन सम फैक्ट्स एंड सम एक्नॉमिक रियलिटीज एंड आई रीड रेट वी इन दिस इन दिस सोसाइटी इन दिन इंडो पाक सोसाइटी have been in spending less than 10% of our revenue <coughs> on education not pakistan i am saying all india all subcontinent we have been spending less than 10% of education for last 700 years 700 years how can you expect poverty duniya mein kahan hai hamare ilake ke alawa duniya mein poverty kahan hoti hai sibai 40 crore people live in this area in this subcontinent who are poor be be it india be it bangladesh be it sri lanka be it pakistan 40 crore people living below the line because in this area the spending on education is has been less than 10% for last 700 years this is the reason why the society is failing state we okay. are unnecessarily bringing state here okay we'll take one more uh, question uh, then we'll close ji sir it's a great honor to be here and listen to you now i had a question regarding the perception you have said pakistan not a failed state right at this point of time you are absolutely right and it is negating the perception of so many pakistani abroad and at home now my point is you have already mentioned three segments that is the economy <coughs> the judiciary and the administration how long we are going to take time to continue on the standard of pakistan not a fail state sir if, if you, can you are not <coughs> going to, to the revert, point uh, uh, and, and ask a question that what my question is sir ke how much time we are going to take so how long will it take for us to get on the right path shabash sir on the right yeah, path because every day we are yeah, deteriorating yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. thank the, you yeah. uh, my friend one of my friend is sitting here and he was talking to me yesterday and if sab baithe i have given 30 years not less than that चले तीस so साल we've got अगर आप, आप उसे कहते हैं कि मैं कल छह वो, वो जो होते हैं सियासतदान कहते हैं छह महीने में मुल्क तकदीर तब्दील कर दूंगा वो झूठ बोल रहे होते हैं सो वीव गॉट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रियली यू वॉन्ट टू रियली रियली ब्रिंग समस्टेंशियल डिफरेंस इन अ लॉन्ग टर्म परसेप्शन ऑफ दिस कंट्री कैन बिकम रिचर दिस कंट्री कैन अचीव इट आई हैव सेट वी हैव स्पॉइल्ड वी हैव स्पॉइल्ड इन वी हैव स्पॉइल्ड इन इन थ्री हंड्रेड ईयर्स We, I have said in this book, I, we have spoiled in 300 years. It will take at least 30 years to correct it. Okay, and now um, so we're running out of time. And uh, now I see two very perceptible uh, value adders of this session, apart from the fact that everyone was introduced to this book. Uh, one is that we have uh, changed the title a little bit, an accountant's view. <laughs> and the second is that uh, Shabbar Saab has given us a time frame of 30 years, uh, which seems uh, 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 more than a lifetime right now. But I want to end on something else. The cover of the book has a has a very nice uh, couplet on it. Mitti ki mohabbat mein ham aashifta sarone, wo karz utare hain ke wajib jo wajib bhi nahi the. जरा एलेबरेट करें सर ये क्या किसके कर्ज हैं और किसने प्रॉब्लम आई एम डिफॉल्ट्स में तो आप डील <laughs> करते ही रहते हैं द प्रॉब्लम विद आर जनरेशन हु हैव बीन बोर्न एंड द जनरेशन माय सन जनरेशन हु हैव हु आर नाउ बीन बोर्न माय सन जनरेशन हु हैव बीन बोर्न इन 60s एंड 70s दे हैव अ ग्रीन पासपोर्ट व्हिच इज अ लायबिलिटी एट द मोमेंट नो नो is conceived to be a liability it should be an asset it should be an asset is a liability you know at the moment we all we are all spending money to get a canadian passport you know the question is so what i am trying to say 
ہماری جو ینگ جنریشن ہے وہ تو وہ قرض لے کے بیٹھی ہے نا وہ قرض اتارنا پڑے گا اس کو اور اس نے یہ کام کیوں کیا ہے ہم نے ہمیں پاکستان میں بینیفٹ کو بڑا اچھا ایوینیو ملا تھا ایوینیو کو ضائع ایکسپٹ کر لینا چاہیے اور میں وداؤٹ ڈی ریسپیکٹ کرتا ہوں ہمیں ہم نے نہیں بلکہ پورے سب کانٹیننٹ نے ضائع کیا سب نے ضائع کیا سب نے ضائع کیا اور پاورٹی اس علاقے میں نہیں ایلیمنیٹ ہو رہی یہ بدیدار پیپل ہوا ہے مٹی کی محبت میں بیٹھے ہیں ہم یہاں اور برین ڈرین یہاں ہمیشہ ہوگی یہاں سے لوگ چلے جائیں گے مگر میں نے اس کتاب میں بھی لکھا ہے جو چلے جائیں گے جب وہ وہاں بیٹھیں گے وہاں بھی مطمئن نہیں رہیں گے ان کو پھر مٹی کی یاد آئے گی اور آئے گی اور نہیں اور مگر مگر دیکھیں اس کے بعد اگلا جو بچہ ہوگا وہ پاکستانی نہیں ہوگا وہ پاکستانی اوریجن ہوگا نہ ہونا بٹ آئی آئی وانٹ ٹو ٹیک آئی وانٹ ٹو آنر دی پاکستانی اوریجن میں اس کو یہ نہیں کہہ رہا تو واپس آ جا وہ نہیں آئے گا واپس میں اسے امید بھی نہیں کر رہا واپس آئے گا بٹ ایٹ لیسٹ پاکستانی اوریجن شوڈ ناٹ بی اے ڈس کریڈٹ تھینک یو ویری مچ شوڈ بی اے کریڈٹ تھینک یو ویری مچ شبت صاحب آئی بین ٹولڈ دیٹ ٹرانسلیشن آف دا بک ان اردو از آلسو بینگ پبلشڈ ہاں اس کے دو نام رکھے تھے میں نے ایک تھا پاکستان کام ریاست نہیں ہے اور ایک نام میری کہا تھا پاکستان کل سے کل تک جو آپ کہیں گے وہ رکھ دیں گے اس کا نام تھینک یو ویری مچ تھینک یو